We mentioned earlier that search engines are only scratching the surface of the web. Allow us to elaborate. Google reportedly shows no more than 16% of the total websites on the internet. That means it's neglecting to show you the remaining 84% of what's really out there. But wait, isn't Google pretty much everywhere? Technically, yes, but it's much more complicated than that. What it comes down to is the way that websites are cataloged. Some people have even speculated that Google has only indexed just 4% of the internet. It's hard to know for sure when you're working with something as grand as the internet, but that 4 to 16% is set to represent approximately 35 trillion web pages. The deep web refers to the web pages that can't be easily found on a search engine. While technically the deep web isn't illegal, there are illegal things happening. For example, the deep web has websites where criminals buy and sell your information. That's right, the deep web is a place where your identity can get stolen. Shadow Crew was one of the original message boards where criminals could buy guns, stolen credit card information, and illicit substances. Even though the message board was shut down by the feds in 2004, many more have popped up in its place. You may have to dig deep to find these message boards, which means that some of the sleaziest and smartest crooks are playing their games with the utmost stealth. You might have heard of Gamergate, which was a terrible thing to happen to female gamers and women in general in this day and age. Part of what is truly disturbing about the deep web is that people use it to dox others. Doxing means that they find an online user's real name, address, phone number, personal email, date of birth, etc. for the purpose of harassing them. The Baphomet subboard on 8chan was notoriously known for doxing and posting private information so that users could instigate attacks. Carnegie Mellon University produced quite an interesting paper about anonymous online trading, aka what the dark side of the deep web is all about. They specifically studied how this market boomed in business after Silk Road, an online anonymous marketplace was shut down. What is truly scary is that one of the most popular products being traded is poison. The poison market is becoming increasingly popular, so if you have enemies, you might want to make friends with them, or at least extend the olive branch. Undercover agents are slowly cracking down on this market, but it's going to take time before it's gone completely. Because you're probably curious, you might be wondering just how much personal information can cost. Well, we're going to tell you something really scary. It's very cheap. You might think your personal information is worth a lot of money, but it's actually less expensive than taking a trip to a discount store. For example, Uber accounts were going for just a dollar each on sketchy marketplaces in the deep web. Even credit reports aren't going for a hefty cost. Getting records from the credit pair Experian and TransUnion can go for as low as $1.50. So your personal information isn't as priceless as you might think. Since we know there's a lot of trading going on with personal information like Uber and credit accounts, it all has to be stored somewhere. The biggest question is, how does the deep web have deep pockets of data storage? Well, back in 2001, the University of California at Berkeley did a study, and it looks like the deep web has about 7.5 petabytes of data. One petabyte equals to about 1 million gigabytes, so that is a lot of data storage happening. A 2014 study put that number at 1 million exabytes, which is equal to 1 billion petabytes. We can only imagine that the amount has increased significantly since then. We know there's a lot of trading and purchasing of illegal things happening in the dark corners of the deep web, but how are people paying for these things? It's not like they can use a traceable credit card. PayPal wouldn't work either. It's not like people are mailing cash to an anonymous address. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where the infamous Bitcoin comes in. Granted, it's not the only way to pay, but it is one of the numerous different types of cryptocurrencies out there. Cryptocurrency is an alternative to digital currency and it's a lot more secure, meaning people can't hack into it to find your identity. 
Most of us know that people are using the deep web for more than just buying products. They are also looking for specific services. We're not talking about random ads for companionship that you might see on Craigslist. The services we're talking about are being done by groups like the Mafia, or so we think. For one, it looks ridiculously easy to hire a hitman on the deep web. For a while, there was quite the scam going on. A group called the Besa Mafia was basically taking people's money but then not delivering on their life-ending services. And it's not like the users could report such fraud to the police either. Because the deep web gives a person a way to browse somewhat anonymously, their activities are difficult to track. This goes back to that whole thing about a website being indexed and all, which opens the door for quite the number of illegal activities. But one of the most terrifying and disturbing things out there is the adult entertainment industry and how it involves those under 18. In the dark, deep web, people seem to get away with it. However, one of the most famous hacker groups, Anonymous, stepped in to help with this issue. While they use the deep web for communication and organizing their takedowns, they also do vigilante work. In February 2017, they took down about 20% of the dark web, targeting sites that involved underage children. Another scary and disturbing thing that is happening on the deep web is the fact that terrorist groups are able to publish propaganda and organize their efforts. Since the deep web gives people a certain level of anonymity, it has become a popular tool. This is how a lot of organizations are able to recruit their people overseas and why you sometimes see teens and young adults running away to join groups like ISIS. Of course, the United States government is aware of this problem. They are trying to develop software that will reveal the identities of people using the deep web for terrorism. They're also trying to crack down on the Onion Router, a software that enables anonymous communication. If you're feeling a tad anxious about any sort of global apocalypse or living in a war-torn country, you might be familiar with prepper groups online. These guys can be a bit intense, but they'll have the last laugh if the government ever collapses and we're doomed to restructure society. The deep web has its share of prepper groups, and they can be even more intense than what you can find on the surface web. Not all preppers or survivalists are the same type of guy who has a bunker and 10 years worth of rations in their basement. But if you want to feel a bit disturbed, the preppers of the deep web have some crazy plans to make it, no matter who goes down in the process. We've been talking about a lot of product that's being bought and sold on the deep web. While we've been talking about tangible product, we haven't discussed the most disturbing product of all, humans. Human trafficking is a growing concern all over the world. When people disappear without a trace, human trafficking is always a factor. How exactly this happens is unknown, but there's more information being revealed each day linking trafficking to the deep web. From organizing kidnappings to selling people online, the deep web has opened up that opportunity for dealers, and it's very disturbing. We're now about to dive into truly one of the most terrifying things about the deep web. As it turns out, about 80% of users on the dark side of the deep web are looking up material that involves harming children. We're not going to go into specifics because even some things can disturb the richest. This is also related to the human trafficking part we just discussed, but this takes the terror to a whole new level. One of the most rumored and popular videos, Dafu Love, involves babies, but not in the cute way. This video is apparently floating somewhere in the dark deep web, and some people have reportedly even lost their minds while watching it. Since all of these purchases of various illegal things are happening in the deep web each day, just how much money is actually being generated? Well, the numbers may surprise you as well as make you question your career choice. Apparently, the biggest dark web markets make an average of $500,000 a day. Some dealers even reportedly make a million dollars a day. In 2013, one of the biggest deep web trading sites, Silk Road, was shut down. But when you shut down one site, 10 more come up in its place. Some of the product being traded and sold is quite disturbing. In 2016, a 19-year-old reported to Vice that he was making thousands per week from buying gift cards using stolen credit cards. He then sold them for cheap on the deep web. He's more financially secure than the average young adult, but he's definitely more paranoid too. 
We should probably have put this in the number one spot because it is so disturbing. On the deep web, people are free to explore their likes and interests without judgment. But there is one corner of the deep web that's much darker than others, and that is the Cruel Onion Wiki. This site shows off a genre of videos where women are wearing heels and doing harm unto small animals like puppies and kitties. It's incredibly upsetting. We're pretty sure the people who do this have no soul. Animal rights groups are trying to get this to stop. Okay, that last one was pretty heavy, so let's take a happy break and shake it off for a moment. Now back to business. Here's something that seems a bit more lighthearted, fake passports. The deep web offers an abundance of resources to get fake passports. Sure, this seems pretty harmless, but then again, think about the people who would want to get into a country illegally, like terrorists, and suddenly this topic gets deep. These fake passports are incredibly detailed and are able to be passed off as the real thing. Another thing that is interesting about the deep web is that there are hackers getting rich from selling and installing malware online. One of the most popular malware softwares, CryptoLocker, is ransomware. Basically, when your computer is infected, you can pay a fee to have it all restored. That's mainly where you'll see hackers making their money. Of course, your personal information can be stolen and then sold on the deep web, but the ransomware itself is pretty disturbing. You're going to need your tinfoil hat for this next one. We can assume that funding for the Onion router that we mentioned earlier, aka Tor, comes from deep web users. But interestingly enough, there are articles out there claiming that the government themselves are funding Tor. In 2013, The Guardian reported that Tor received $1.8 million from the U.S. government through third parties, all while the NSA was trying to take it down at the same time. If the deep web has so much illegal activity happening, then why is our country's government essentially giving them money? It's been made clear that identity theft is a growing problem, and it seems to all be happening on the deep web. Not only is an adult's personal information not safe, but it seems like a baby's personal info is vulnerable too. That's right, a freshly made social security number for your newborn could be up for grabs. Kids are becoming more vulnerable to identity theft than ever before. In December 2018, over 500,000 current and former students in the San Diego Unified School District had their information compromised or stolen. Keep an eye on the deep web for their info. At least that's our guess of where it went. Finally, and this is probably the biggest no-brainer in the world, but we have to mention it, you can buy weapons illegally on the deep web. While some dealers won't sell unless you're licensed, there's always someone out there who will take the risk. This fact is probably one of the biggest counter-arguments used in the gun control debate. It's also terrifying to think about. People can use the deep web to access some of the most secretive marketplaces and be able to buy something that can be used to do harm unto others. And it's not just terrorists doing this. Even your next door neighbors could be guilty of illegally purchasing a firearm online.